Hi everyone, uh, we have three quick tips on communicating for tourism businesses uh, during the next couple of weeks, which is gonna be really interesting for you as soon as we know uh, when you're able to open and what that's gonna look like. Uh, so the first point I have is to make everything as personal as possible. So if you haven't done video, we haven't tried before, give it a go. It's not, it's not as bad as it looks. Um, it's, it's, not as, it's not as hard as I make it look anyway. So um, having video does break down the barrier between you, the computer screen and the guest. Anything you can do that does that at the moment is a great thing. So you're not Virgin Holidays, you're not TUI, you're not some massive corporation that's kind of removed from your guests. Just trying to give people a great time in the Southwest. So anything you can do, whether that's video, uh, whether it is pictures and introducing yourself through the Facebook, which um, a lot of people don't do. So we're all trying to kind of take photos of the beach or the or the cottage or whatever it may be. Um, photos of yourselves breaks down a barrier. As soon as people understand there are kind of like humans behind the business, it makes it more personable, breaks down those barriers. And, and everything is usually easier when people know there are kind of real humans behind something. The next point is on tone of voice. So we've all at some point had to look at terms and conditions, risk statements and all those sort of things. Um, they are written in a very different way to how we want our Facebook posts, Instagram posts or, or videos to sound and to read. So anything you are writing, make sure it's as friendly as possible. Remember, you are trying to help these people. They're going to stay with you. Um, they may be worried about certain things. So putting minds at rest is always easier if there's a personal tone um, and always offer at the end of any post to um, take any questions, whether that's on the phone or email and, and just put people's minds at rest. Um, in terms of communicating as well, making sure that you're responding to messages, questions, queries as soon as possible. Um, and that includes any comments, obviously, as well. The final point I have today is to be proactive. So I think there are a lot of businesses out there at the moment that are kind of waiting. Um, we're waiting for Boris to you know, kind of stand behind his lectern and let us know when you're able to open. What I'd say about that is my anticipation is that as soon as there is confirmation that you're able to open, people are going to be absolutely hammered by a lot, a lot, a lot of emails and posts from people. So what I'm saying to the most businesses that I speak to at the moment is try to be proactive, get something out before that announcement. You don't know exactly when you're going to be open, um, but you are planning to open most on the 4th or the 6th of July. So letting them know that you are kind of, that's the plan at the moment. Here are the steps that I'm putting in place that will put your mind at rest because people will have worries, um, whether founded or not. And just let them know that they're kind of the first to know as soon as, as soon as you have confirmation. So being proactive this week, making sure you're getting communications out, whether that's through Facebook, through uh, email marketing, whatever it may be. It just means that you're ahead of the game because as soon as there is a confirmed date, as I said, people are going to be kind of bombarded. It may well be as bad as GDPR um, for a few days. So um, those are my three tips. Be personal, try video, get personal in your posts. Make sure that your tone of voice is friendly. Always read it back. Does it sound like you? And the third and final one is to be proactive. Don't wait um, until you know something in a couple of weeks. Get out there now. Get ahead of the curve. Um, best of luck. If you need any more advice, you know where I am. Thanks very much. Take care.